Hi guys, today I want to introduce you to 10 Oasis tracks you might never have heard before. Most of which have been hidden away on random obscure releases down through the years. Hardcore Oasis fans will probably already know all of these, but for many of you this might be a chance to discover some previously unheard Oasis gems. And at the very end I'm also going to introduce you to a small handful of really obscure stuff that might be new, some of it, to even the hardcore. Also I wanted to let you know that me and my band are going to be putting on a free gig in London on December the 9th 2023 at the Camden Eye. We're going to be supported by The Front Rank, a band I've featured previously on my channel, on the video about getting your mixes to sound something like Definitely Maybe. So if you'd like to come down say hello and have a listen to the bands it would be great to see you there. But now let's start by looking at this the soundtrack to the movie Goal. This was released in 2005 and featured three songs by Oasis. One was just a remix of Morning Glory, but the other two tracks are completely unique in Oasis history. Because they were released under the band name Oasis, but featured band lineups that I don't think happened anywhere else in Oasis's existence. So the first song on the list today is track two on the Goal soundtrack. Who Put the Weight of the World on My Shoulders? It's a brilliant little ballad sung by Noel. Now the band lineup for this track is Noel on vocals and guitar, Gem Archer actually on bass, Rich File from Uncle on percussion, James Lavelle from Uncle on keys, and frequent collaborator Terry Kirkbride on drums. For many of you, I bet that's the first time you've ever heard of Oasis with that lineup. The song itself is brilliant. It's a kind of tug at your heartstrings epic that I don't think would have been out of place in 1996. It's a really moving, powerful song that deserves to be a little bit better known than it is. At the time of filming, I don't think this rare track, however, has ever appeared on Spotify or any of the major streaming platforms. It is, however, available on YouTube, and I'm gonna put links to most of these songs in the description if you wanna go and check any of them out. But now, let's move on to the second rare song on this list. It's on the same CD and it's track 7. Cast No Shadow, the Uncle Beachhead Mix. Now this is titled as if it's a remix, but it's not. It's actually a complete rebuild of the song from the ground up. And for this song we have a similar band lineup to Weight of the World, except this time Gem isn't on bass. It's Marilyn Manson's bass player, Geordie White. Bet you didn't see that Oasis lineup coming. This track is a kind of update of Cast No Shadow, with Noel Gallagher on lead vocals. It's been reimagined, reproduced, and mixed differently to the Morning Glory version. And it's quite a weird one because Noel's vocal take is great, but it's mixed strangely, almost as if there's not enough compression on it. So in the moments where he sings softly, his voice just vanishes into the mix in several places. So for me at least, while all the performances are great, I don't think we've really had the chance to properly appreciate this version, because I'd love to hear this, with Noel's vocals properly mixed. And while this complete re-recording of the song isn't really as good as the version on Morning Glory, it's still a fascinating timepiece. And it's still 100% worth checking out. It's not on streaming, but it is on YouTube, so the link is in the description once again. And now onto the third track on this list, Within You, Without You. On Boxing Day 2007, BBC Radio 2 broadcast a 40th anniversary Sgt Pepper's programme in which various bands performed songs from the album in tribute to the Beatles, and Oasis contributed a really interesting cover. They adapted the version of Tomorrow Never Knows and Within You Without You found on the Beatles' Love album, but Oasis didn't do it as a medley of those two songs, they instead performed the whole of Within You Without You in that style. This cover is very much in the genre of Dig Out Your Soul Oasis, and it's brilliant. However, to date, it has never been released on any physical format that I'm aware of, and according to the BBC website, has actually only ever been officially broadcast twice. But thankfully, it is available on YouTube, and it's a brilliant listen. And if Dig Out Your Soul is ever reissued with bonus tracks, I hope this is one of them. And now to song four. Shaker Maker, the Slide Up Mix. This is the first of the rare Japanese bonus tracks. 
Shaker Maker, the slide up mix, appears only on the Japanese version of the 2014 3 CD reissue of Definitely Maybe. It's called the slide up mix, but it probably should have been called the shaker up mix because the shaker is really loud all the way through. Liam's vocal hasn't been properly de-essed either in this version, so every time he says any sharp consonant, it bursts out of the right hand speaker distractingly loud on slap back delay, which is quite funny. But aside from that little annoyance, it really is an interesting listen. This version has much wider stereo panning than the original, all the parts are much clearer and much more easily audible than they were on Definitely Maybe, but it does lack the punch of the original. And while it's not been brick walled Definitely Maybe style, what really makes this version special is that it includes the long lost missing final verse sung by Liam in the early 90s from I'd Like to Teach the World to Sing. He often sang that verse live and at last, here it is, the version he recorded in the studio. In this new mix, you can also hear new parts, including finger clicks in the background. This is not on any streaming platforms, so once again, the YouTube link is in the description. And now on to song five. Can you see it now? I can see it now. This is a Japanese only bonus track from Don't Believe the Truth. And it's a weird one for sure, but also brilliant. And it would be hard to come up with a more stereotypical Oasis song title, including brackets and multiple exclamation marks. This track is one of my favorites on the list, along with song one, Weight of the World. It's a really simple, pounding, hypnotic chord sequence all the way through. But for some reason, despite its simplicity, it really works. The song is over four minutes long and Noel's vocals don't actually kick in until around the three minute mark. There's just a few lines of lyrics repeated over and over. But for some reason, I love it. To me, Can You See It Now marks the point at which Noel had swung all the way back to the opposite approach to Be Here Now. From the overblown, multi-layered complexity of something like Magic Pie, all the way back to something as simple and equally effective as this. And just to add to the kind of driving psychedelic vibe of the song, it sounds like the keys and some of the guitars are being run through a very slowly rotating Leslie speaker. And that's the same effect John Lennon used on several songs, particularly Good Morning, Good Morning on Sgt Pepper's to create that same warping effect. And again, it's never been on any streaming platform as far as I know. The link is in the description. Next up, song six is a song that is technically speaking, not actually Oasis but it's one of my favorites. It's a cover of Carnation by The Jam, credited to Liam Gallagher and Steve Craddock of Ocean Color Scene. Now there's no personnel listing in the booklet to say who played what on the track other than Liam and Steve. But we do have a video of the band performing it live. And in this version at least, the band includes both Liam and Noel. So I'm just counting it as Oasis. And the band who we see on this live video really were a real all-star lineup. Liam on vocals, Noel on guitar, Steve Craddock and Damon Minchella from Ocean Color Scene on guitar and bass, Steve White on drums, and Paul Weller himself on the keys. Now this track is one of Liam's very last outings with his original 90s style of singing. It was released in 1999 and is a rare example of one of the last studio moments of Liam singing in his 90s style. This one is on Spotify and it's absolutely brilliant, so go check it out. And now onto the seventh song, Merry Christmas Everybody. In 2002, the NME released a compilation called One Love in support of the War Child charity. And on that album is a fairly obscure Oasis gem from the past. It's Noel Gallagher singing a mostly acoustic version of a Slade song, but this was released in the early days of Autotune and it's a really interesting listen because Noel's voice has been so heavily auto-tuned and not really checked that you can hear all the way through the auto-tune kind of malfunctioning and bouncing him onto the wrong note. Now, of course, the average listener wouldn't notice that at all, but if you have a little bit of experience in studio work and production and you listen closely, you can hear the auto-tune kicking in and bouncing his voice around all the way through. And as is so often the case in these Oasis production cock-ups, everything that the musicians are doing is great. I would personally love to hear 
Noel's version of this song with all the auto-tune removed and just his voice naturally, because his singing's great. While the auto-tune on the vocals of the version that was released does spoil it a little bit for me, this one is also on Spotify if you want to go check it out. And Song 8 is the other rare track on the 2014 Japanese Definitely Maybe box set. Bring it on down from the Mono Valley Sessions. This really is a rare recording. When Oasis went to record Definitely Maybe for the first time, they started work at a studio called Mono Valley that's just up the road from Rockfield, where they would later record Morning Glory. But while in the studio, they realised that everything they had recorded wasn't really up to scratch. It wasn't good enough to release. So that entire first session was scrapped and they went to a different studio and started again. From the Mono Valley sessions, we've only really heard parts. Slide Away was the only song from those sessions that made it onto the final album. There's a demo version of Live Forever that may also have been from those sessions. There's also the occasional audio clip played in the background of the Supersonic documentary. But as far as I know, this is the only other full track to have ever been released from the scrapped sessions. And the truth is, the way this version is mixed, it does sound incredibly tame. But that doesn't really matter because it's a history piece. It's brilliant to hear another proper studio recording of Liam, pre-definitely maybe. He sounds really young. And once again, the tracks themselves, the performances by the musicians, in my opinion, are all great. So I'm personally hoping that we get to hear all of the Mono Valley tracks, fingers crossed, on the 30th anniversary of Definitely Maybe. But I really hope that no corners are cut production-wise, because this is a prime example of what Oasis sounded like in the studio without the magic touch of producer Owen Morris. It's not as good as the Definitely Maybe version, but it is a fascinating little snapshot in time. And once again, this is not on streaming sites, but it is available on YouTube. Link in the description. And now we come on to song nine, an incredibly rare one, the studio version of I Am The Walrus, featuring Liam Gallagher on Cowbell. In the actual Definitely Maybe sessions after Mono Valley, Oasis recorded a full studio version of I Am The Walrus. The version that was released was actually live. Up until recently, the studio version was a completely unheard version of the song with a completely unheard Liam vocal. But in the past year, a monitor mix of that song came to light and was uploaded to YouTube. However, it's now gone. Now, Noel Gallagher's record label tend to be pretty chill about people using bits of Oasis stuff on YouTube, but that song seems to have been removed everywhere. And I don't know, but I reckon this is why we can probably expect a fully, properly mixed and mastered version of that song on the 30th anniversary version of Definitely Maybe. Of course, I don't know, I'm just hoping. Unfortunately, I can't give you a link to this one because it is no longer available anywhere online, as far as I'm aware. And now lastly, on to the 10th song on the list, Whatever, the All The Young Dudes version. When the band recorded Whatever, they apparently recorded a set of unused gang vocals on the outro section of the song, in which you can hear a big crowd of people singing All The Young Dudes Carry The News over the instrumental section. And to me, this sounds like it was recorded on the same track as the big crowd clapping and cheering and whooping at the end of the song. The song, All The Young Dudes by Mott The Hoople, was clearly quite a big influence on Noel because he also used the turnaround from the chorus of that song in Stand By Me. The only real difference between this version of Whatever and the official one is these gang vocals in the outro. And this version has never been released and is once again only available on YouTube. So that's the list of 10 super obscure songs wrapped up, but there is still a little more. I have to include one honourable mention and a handful of really, really obscure little Easter eggs. The honourable mention is not obscure at all really, but there is a great and already very well known different version of the song Fade Away, which was recorded for the Help album, and this is available on Spotify. It's not super rare as such, everyone knows about it, but it's definitely worth a listen. But now on to the stupid stuff. On the American Wonderwall single, there is a different mix of Talk Tonight. 
the whole song has been mixed slightly differently with a different vibe. And at the beginning, Noel going, I'll just take my watch off, is replaced by him saying, get on with it. And right at the end of the track, you can hear him saying, got any batteries, in a silly Cockney accent. You got any batteries? And on that American Wonderwall single, there is also a different, and in my view, better mix of Rocking Chair. The sound of the song just has a bit more body, but the real kicker for me is that it doesn't fade in. You get the actual studio start of the song. As far as I know, that's the only place you can hear the studio version of Rocking Chair as it actually starts. This whole American Wonderwall EP is actually available on YouTube, and it may be that there are other differences in some of the other three songs as well, as Talk Tonight and Rocking Chair are clearly different independent mixes. You can hear how some might say actually ended without the fade out by listening to the version of the song that was released with the Rock Band game. And you can also hear a completely unique outro to Rock and Roll Star on that game because Noel has since confirmed that due to a balls up behind the scenes, the wrong guitar part ended up getting put on the outro of Rock and Roll Star on that game, which means it's a completely unique version. So there is just a handful of really obscure snippets for you for the loonies like me who are interested in hearing what happened in a fade out or a fade in. And of course, we still haven't heard the holy grail of Oasis fade outs, which is the last few minutes of All Around the World. So if you have a copy of that and would be willing to share it, please get in touch. Don't forget, if you're down south and fancy coming along and hearing my band, hearing some tunes from my album live, we are playing at the Camden Eye in London on December the 9th, 2023. It's a free gig, so get that date in your diaries. Let me know in the comments below if there are any other Oasis rarities that you feel should have been included in this list. And as always, I'll see you next time.